to see the plane. Obviously, I've seen a plane because we are at the UK's busiest airport, Heathrow. Now, what are we doing here? We're coming here for a bit of breakfast, a bit of lunch, and a bit of dinner. And we're going to go to all different terminals. So I think we're going to do Terminal 2, Terminal 3, and Terminal 4. And what I want to do is sort of give you guys a look at seeing what the different restaurants are and what's available. Now, I think of doing a bit of a series about this and, you know, I'd be interested to get your comments. You know, would this interest you? Not just London, I'm talking about everywhere. The whole of the UK, from Scotland, Edinburgh Airport, Leeds, Manchester, you name it, all the airports. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off. No, I'm not. What I'm going to do is, as always, let's give it a go. There's another aeroplane. And another one. Right, to start the adventure off, where are we? Terminal 3. Let's get going. Come on then. Actually, Virgin Atlantic and Delta. Richard Branson, if you're watching, want to go to America and do some videos. Come on then. Okay, start the adventure off. Where are we? We're in Terminal 3. As you come up, you've got security up there, and to the left-hand side is the restaurants. Now, it's time for breakfast. So where am I going to go? I'm going to go to the Oceanic Bar, uh, Pub and Kitchen. As always, let's give it a go. Okay, so we come inside. I'm looking at the breakfast menu here. Now, they have a, a really nice range. They've got the full English breakfast, some veggie options there as well. Um, no fuss breakfast, I'm gonna come back to that one. You've got Eggs Benedict, you've got tacos, steak and eggs if you fancy it as well, pancakes, and lots of hot drinks and uh, juices. Now, me, I'm gonna go for their no fuss breakfast, which comes with bacon, two big smoked ale sausages, Eggs are your choice, I'm just gonna get fried eggs. Uh, hash browns and sour, bro sour dough toast. Uh, that's 13.95. I've actually chosen that because there's no mushrooms. It's really good. Um, and I'm gonna have that with um, an English, English breakfast tea, which is three pound 25. A little bit about the uh, Oceanic itself. It is a very, very spacious, um, pub, I suppose, it's more of a pub than a restaurant. Um, tables are nicely laid out, uh, very, very spacious, and I've got to say the staff are very attentive as well, so, uh, and the music's all nice and mellow in the background. Okay, I'll see you when my breakfast arrives. Now, interestingly, before I came in here, the sign outside says, uh, you go, you find yourself a table, um, you've got a QR code there, scan on that and place your order or go to the bar. However, it was, they didn't say option three, and I've two used option three. The chap came over, took my order, and uh, yeah, so you have three options really. Obviously, uh, someone taking your order, a QR code, or you just go to the bar and order yourself. Just make sure you get a table first. I'm on table three. So, my breakfast has arrived here. We'll take a close up on this. I've got the two eggs there, sunny side up, a couple of hash browns, two of the sausages, um, some bacon. I think there's a couple of slices of bacon. Yeah, two slices of bacon, and my sourdough um, toast with butter. The butter's actually nice and soft. And for those that want to know, it's a coronet butter which contains milk. Okay, let's cut into these eggs and see what they look like. Okay. Let's see what they look cut like. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're excellent. Um, nice colour to the yolk there. I'm going to try that with the hash brown. Now, loads of you don't like hash browns. Shouldn't be on an English breakfast, etc, etc. Don't necessarily disagree. Say that, I don't mind hash browns. Mm. 
Hmm. Well, well, I've got to say, the last few times I've had hash browns, they haven't been crispy in any shape or form, but these are. They're nice and crispy. Yeah, nice flavour to them. Take a look there. You can see. Now, I'm not silly. I know they're, they're probably frozen and they're being put into the deep fat fryer there. But excellent crunch on the outside. Yeah, nice and hot as well. Hmm. So, let's try the sausages, big L sausages. They're lacking on the, the big side. Now, I suspect they've been in a deep fat fryer, and the reason I say that is you can see where the skins uh, burst there. Anyhow, let's see what they look like and taste like. So, yeah, there's, um, there's no herbs in there or anything. So, let's see what it tastes like. They're okay. They're not the best sausages I've ever had. So yeah, not, um, take a, another closer look then. There's, there's very little flavour in there. I think they're, um, they're just catering sausages. And do you know what? I think a good sausage makes the breakfast. It's a little bit disappointing because the staff are going around with logos on their back saying how, how good the sausages are. Mm. Now for the bacon. Yeah, the bacon looks okay. The bacon is very, very smoky. Actually, it's interesting. I actually don't mind smoky bacon, but that is a very, very um, in-depth flavor with the smoke there. Really, really smoky. The bacon itself is nicely cooked. I think it's probably been sitting in a, in a bain marie for a while. But um, yeah, no problems with the temperature of it. It's actually a nice piece of bacon. Just saying on the bacon, obviously it's back bacon. You can see the fat running through there. Yeah, I've got to say, that is tasty. I'm, I'm quite impressed with that. Yeah, that's very, very tasty. Now onto the toast. It's sourdough toast. What I like is the butter is actually nice and soft. The only thing I like, it doesn't come pre-buttered either, so if you're not into your butter, you can sort yourself out, can't you? So let's put that over there. Now, I always like to put my egg on there. Of course, I have to break the egg before I put it on there. It's a nice color to that yolk. What I do like is it is sourdough bread, um, so it's not cheap if you like. Although saying that, it's not the uh, thickest piece of uh, toast I've ever seen. Okay, let's uh, add some pepper. Gotta have the pepper on my eggs. If you like your ketchup, you've got the Heinz ketchup there. I always have brown sauce for my breakfast. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck in and see you guys shortly. The one thing that I am impressed with is, portion-wise, that's a nice breakfast. Um, you've got to bear in mind we are in an airport, so we'd expect to pay that much more. However, the exception of the sausages there, um, yeah, I'm quietly impressed. That's, that's really good. The sausages aren't the worst in the world, but yeah, I'm quietly impressed. Okay, see you guys shortly. Okay, so I've got the bill. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to see you guys outside because it has got a little bit busy around here. Um, it's not right because obviously they're discussing flights and all the rest of the adventures and what have you. So I'll see you guys outside. Actually, I'll finish my tea first. See you shortly. Okay, so we've taken another table in the Oceanic. I think it's quite interesting. You take a quick glance there. Most of the tables there are actually really, really empty. But where we sat, someone sat there, sat there, sat there, sat there. And got, of course, you, you, get, you choose what table you want to sit at. Anyhow, on to the breakfast. Now, I'm going to say, I thought it was a nice portion. It was a nice sized breakfast. The disappointment was the sausages. Uh, they, there was no huge flavour to the sausages, and I do think they're the integral part of the breakfast. Um, I thought the two eggs, they were excellently cooked. Nice flavour to them. Nice, uh, nice um, colour to the yolk there. 
two hash browns. I know lots of you don't like the hash browns, but they were really nice and crispy. Um, so yeah, I like the back bacon there as well. Um, real smoky flavor to the back bacon, really in depth. And the sourdough toast. Um, we preferred it just a little bit thicker, but it's better than just having normal, normal bread. For my no fuss breakfast was £13.95, and for my tea was £3.25, so it came to £17.20. Now, the thing that absolutely blew me away no service charge. You know, you look there, absolutely no service charge. So um, I was really expecting that because obviously you're in an airport, it's a captive audience if you like, and yeah. Um, and I've got to say, the guy who served me today, he was excellent. So I did actually leave him tip because he was really attentive and he was very, very good. And thank you very much for that. Um, now, what marks am I going to give it? Got to bear in mind location. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, if you're in Terminal 3 and you fancy a bit of breakfast, I really recommend you come over here and give it a go because the Oceanic has got excellent standards, excellent staff, and you know, the breakfast wasn't too bad, was it? it you know, it was a nice sized portion, and unfortunately, I'm a little bit full up, so I'm going to have to go for a, a bit of a I waddle around uh, Heathrow for an hour or so just to uh, sort of get myself a bit fit for the next meal. The other thing is, do you actually want to have a huge, great big breakfast before you get on a flight? Mm, no, I, I definitely don't. Um, and that's why I possibly should have had the eggs benedict or something. So, anyhow, onwards and upwards, off to terminal two. Two, two. Hey, what? Well, it's a hell of a walk. Okay, so it's time for a bit of lunch. Where are we going? The Queen's Arms. And that's quite apt because Terminal 2 is the Queen's Terminal. As always, let's give it a go. Okay, so we come inside the Queen's Arms. Now I want you to take a look out here. What a fantastic seat. You watch all the aeroplanes go past and uh, take off, land, everything. Anyhow, I'm not here to watch. Well, actually, I am here to watch that. A bit exciting, isn't it? Okay, so take a look at the menu here. Uh, we've got a breakfast range there, mains, small plates, sandwiches, puddings, hot drinks. So yeah, I'm gonna go for the all-day breakfast. No, I'm not, I've just had my breakfast. I'm gonna go for the Chowcroft Farm Beef Burger with Gouda cheese, lettuce, tomato, red onions, their secret sauce, and some house chips. Now that's £18.95. Now, as you come in here, really modern. And I've got to say that, as I said earlier on, the view is incredible. Really, really nice. Having a look through the menu here, the breakfast prices are, are very, very similar to the first place, but if you want to come in here and just have a sandwich, they're about £10 each, and they've got some small plates there as well, which range from £6.50, or £5.50 actually, for olives, up to eleven ninety five for the nachos. Um, again, mains, they range fifteen fifty up to nearly £20. And you've got to bear in mind where we're located. It is an airport, so it's not going to be the cheapest, is it? Um, I mean, how do you feel? Uh, 18 95 for a burger and chips. Doesn't need to be a good burger, doesn't it? Okay, see you when the meal arrives. Okay, so my burger's arrived. First impressions? I'm going to struggle to eat all this, aren't I? It's a bit small, isn't it? Yeah, just portion wise. Yeah, I'm talking about actually small, the size of that knife. Tiny, and I've checked, they're all exactly the same. Anyhow, onto the food. Yeah, portion wise, it does look a little bit on the small side. But you've got to bear in mind actually, while I'm sitting here, it is small, it's nearly 19 pound. So yeah, it is very, very, very small. Okay, let's tuck in and see what it looks like. Let's put the chips over there. Let's open it up and let's have a look inside. 
So you have the, the lettuce. I'd imagine underneath is their secret sauce. I think that's a burger sauce. I don't think that's too secret. And you have your tomato. And then your, your beef burger. And some more sauce underneath with the Gouda cheese. Now, I want to take a quick look at this because that is very, very small. Very small. Okay, let's try it. Get back together again. Now, the other thing that's interesting, it comes on a piece of paper which says the daily catch, which I think is meant for kind of fish and chips, but I hope. Actually, presentation wise, it does look very nice. You can see all the juices coming out there as well. And I've got to say, that is one really good burger. What is really excellent in there is the, the cheese. It's got a nice smokiness and, and that works really well. The lettuce, the tomato, it's very fresh. And I do like the, their secret sauce, which is basically a burger sauce. But the burger itself, that is a really good burger. It's full of flavor, very meaty. And I also like the fact that the bun is nicely toasted and it's not brioche either. Um, yeah, I'm, I am actually really impressed with the flavors. I'd be more impressed if there's more of it, but the, the flavors are, are very good. What works is so good there, and I'm gonna have it from now on, is that Gouda cheese. That really does make that meal. It is so good in there. You can't really see it because of the tomato, which in fairness I also like because it's, uh, it's um, beef tomato. So it's one of the big ones there, obviously cut, cut down. That is a very, very good burger. Is it worth the price? Don't know. Now, let's have a look at the chips. Let's pour them out there. Let's pour them all out there so you can see how big the portion is. Mm. Now, it's quite strange because the running thing in restaurants in London is let's see how many chip, how few chips we can give you. And here at the airport, the running thing continues. There isn't a huge portion there, is there? Now, they're not seasoned, so I will season them, actually. The other problem is there's no, there's no vinegar available, so put a little bit of salt on there. Take a look. Now the chips are being done in the oven. Um, imagine they're, they're frozen chips, and um, yeah. Chips are chips. Not the best, not the worst. And definitely not the biggest portion. What I'm going to do here, so I'm going to crack on with this. I'm going to see if I can find some ketchup and some vinegar, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys shortly. So I finished my burger and chips. Didn't take me too long, to be really honest, and um, only because I've got another meal to come, I'm quite pleased it was small, but that was very, very small. And the interesting thing was, I just saw an Aer Lingus flight take off. We're coming over to Ireland soon, so we'll see you over there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the bill and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so I've paid the bill. Now, let's start off with the meal itself. No, actually, just one Location-wise, this is fantastic. You know, great viewing area to watch the planes coming in and taking off. So yeah, I really like that. Now, on to the food. The burger itself, that was one tasty burger. The Gouda cheese worked so good with it, the smokiness. I love the tomatoes, the lettuce, and the burger sauce that was in there. However, it was a child's portion. And even then, I think your, your child would be hungry afterwards because it was very, very, very small. Yeah, um, I did like as well, it wasn't in a brioche bun, so just, I just prefer the normal bun there. Nicely toasted as well. I've got the bill here. So, basically, for my burger and chips, it was £18.95. Now, what's weird on here, it says, an optional service charge of 12.5% has been added to your bill. Well, it wasn't. Um, I think they felt sorry for me. I think they thought, actually, that, that burger was so small, we can't charge them an extra 12.5%. So, what marks am I going to give it? I'll give it six and a half, seven. Main issue there 
it's obviously it's not the cheapest, but the portion size that that's the big stumbling block. What do you think? Um, am I being generous there? Am I being a bit harsh there? Um, yeah, you let me know in the comments section. Okay, on to Terminal 4. Now, the good news is, it's a long way away, so I can work off a little bit of me uh, breakfast and me lunch. Yeah, wow. It is one big place, Heathrow. Very big. See you guys shortly. Okay, for the final meal of the day, we've come to Terminal 4, as I've said a few times now. And where are we going? We're going to Co-Pilot's Bar and Kitchen. Now, if you fancy a coffee, you've got Cafe Nero over there, you've got W.H. Smith's as well. You've got to change some money up, you've got the currency exchange. Now, as always, let's give it a go. And I'm going to wait for me Co-Pilot as well. Come on then. Okay, before I start on the menu, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, co-pilots here. Again, it's, I'm sitting in a nice booth here. It's got excellent seating all around. They've got booths for two people, booths for four. Yeah, it's just, it's nice and spacious. Um, not too busy, just a, a nice steady crowd in here. And uh, yeah, good. Okay, so I've got the menu in front of me here. You've got the all day breakfast, you've got some nibbles, main plates, uh, desserts, pizza. You can have a pizza if you want. Actually, I'm just having a look here 12 inch pizza, £20.75 up to £22.50. It's a bit expensive. Actually, talking about expensive, I just moaned about the price of the burger in the last place. Uh, the burger here is a pilot's burger and it's £21.75. And if you want some bacon with that, it's another £2.50. And a bit of cheese is another pound. I don't think I should have moaned about the last place. Okay, what am I gonna have? I'm gonna have their creamy vegetarian penne pasta, which is cherry tomatoes with courgettes, peppers, and Parmesan cheese. Now, that's uh, 13 pound 50. Now, if you actually wanna add a piece of grilled chicken to that, it's just another six pound, but obviously, it's not gonna be vegetarian then, is it? Okay, I'll see you when the food arrives. Okay, some pasta's arrived. Right. We'll take a look at that. Now that is a nice portion. That is a really good portion there. You've got the penne pasta. Uh, you've got the Parmesan cheese there. You can see that on top. You've got courgettes, cherry tomatoes, peppers, and obviously it's coming a rich creamy sauce there as well. Nice and hot. You can see the steam coming off there. Yeah. Now it's all about the taste, isn't it? So let's tuck in. Yeah. Now I had, had one of the courgettes. Um, again, they're nice and soft. You can see that there. Yeah, it's really, really creamy. And it has got a nice flavour. But what it does need, it does need some seasoning. So, a little bit of salt. And I do like my... Uh, black pepper on my pasta. And so, that's me watching Rick Stein too much on telly. Now, actually, talking about Rick Stein, you know, I will be coming down to Cornwall, Rick, and you know, I'll have to give your place in Padstow a, a little check over. What do you guys think? Hmm. Okay, if you take a look through here, you can see the cherry tomatoes. Now, my guess here is this is uh, definitely microwaved. Um, one, because it, it came out incredibly quick. And two, even like the, the peppers, the courgettes, and the tomatoes are, are very, very, very soft. 
um, which again is a sign it's obviously it's come out of the microwave. But I suppose what am I saying? It's a microwave meal. Well, if it is, well, it probably is. It's a tasty one. Should I have had the chicken? No, funny enough, I don't think it needs it. What I do like is the creaminess there, because um, it makes the, the pasta nice and moist. So, no, you can see there. And the parmesan itself, well, that's now all melted into it. But no, that's, um, yeah, it's got nice flavors to it. Hmm. Right, I'm wading my way through here. I'm not convinced having pasta was a good choice for my last meal. It is incredibly filling. It's actually quite tasty as well, but it is a very filling meal. Portion wise, you saw a lot of pasta there. But hey ho, at least it's tasty. So, finished my pasta. What can I say? First of all, I chose the wrong meal there after having breakfast and lunch. The last thing I needed was a huge, big, big plate of pasta. Certainly, it's not the restaurant's fault, that's completely down to me. Um, onto the pasta itself. Now, I'm 99.9999% certain that was microwaved. Um, yeah, it was, it was a microwave wheel. However, it was tasty. The pasta was good, it had nice creamy sauce there. Um, everything was in there, you know, the uh, courgettes, the peppers, um, and the cherry tomatoes. So it had a nice, a real nice uh, flavour. So I'm not, I'm not criticising it. As a meal, it, it certainly one, it was very, very filling, but yeah, it was, it was okay. You've got to bear in mind, if, just behind the cameraman is the departure gate here. If you're hungry and you're getting on a plane, for the money, you know, I've got the bill here in front of me, which I've paid, for the money, I actually think, you know, it's not too bad, to be honest. It, it, the flavours are there. Did need the seasoning, mind you, but the flavours are there. Now onto the bill. Total bill was simple, it was £13.50. The interesting thing, all them restaurants, not one restaurant has charged any service charge. And you've got to bear in mind, they've got a captive audience here. You're coming in, you're flying out. Just really don't understand why they haven't added the service charge. I'm quite pleased they haven't added the service charge, but yeah, I find that really interesting. Um, again, what do you think? I think I, I, those of you don't like service charge, but in the place where they're almost guaranteed that no one's going to argue, they don't charge it. Now, what marks are going to give co-pilots? It's all very much of a muchness, to be honest. Um, I'm going to give it six and a half, seven out of ten. You know, everything's very, very similar. All the restaurants today are very, very similar. Behind me there, you've got a Cafe Nero, you've got a WH Smith over there. So, again, if you just fancy a sandwich or uh, a coffee or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever you're really looking for. However, I'm certainly not going to knock co-pilots, nice standards, nice staff, big portion of food. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside and give you my final thoughts of the day. Whew, I am full up. My own fault. Come on then. Okay, so my final thoughts of the day. Oh, my first thought is it's a little bit blowy out here. Now, I had three different meals, obviously the breakfast, the lunch and the dinner. Now, I'm not going to go through them all. I've already, already done that. Um, the thing that's interesting is all the restaurants were kind of of a similar quality you know they weren't top they weren't bottom they were just sort of a kind of an average i think of an average of about a seven uh, the thing i did find really interesting i've said this quite a few times is no service charge in any of them and i found that really really well surprising more than anything else because as i said you are a captive audience when you're here but i think that's really good as well now what i'd like to do is hear your thoughts as always really interesting what you thought of our day at heathrow is it a good idea until next time it's very blowy and the cameraman's getting freezing cold bye bye